Challenger business jet captain and former airline pilot. Any procedures or techniques I discuss with you today are strictly for flight simulator use only and for our entertainment. Always consult a professional flight instructor for flying lessons. Well, good evening, and thank you for your incredible patience tonight. Welcome to Foxtrot Alpha Aviation and the Hot Star Challenger 650 walk around. So right now, as you can see, we're in the lobby of the Hot Star FBO, and we're just gonna head up a little bit here, check it out. Uh, we're not gonna spend too much time in the FBO. As a matter of fact, we're gonna head right out to the aircraft and uh, start our walk around. So very typical in uh, in our operation is that one crew member will be doing the flight planning. They'll be preparing the air, um, all of the documentation for the flight, uh, making sure that all of the ducks are in a row for no tam checks, weather checks, all of those kind of things. And the other person is assigned to getting the aircraft ready. So what we're going to look at today is a typical Challenger 650 walk around that I may conduct um, if I'm doing this in real life. So all of you are familiar with the aircraft as far as the exterior. We're going to, you know, look at it quite intimately here. And the first thing we're going to do is we arrive at the aircraft. Um, typically, this inspection actually starts inside the airplane. So we would do a safety inspection in the plane, which I'm going to do on another video, which would be much, much shorter. This would be a very long and extensive video. And um, I really hope that uh, you can interact if you can through the stream chat. 
I'm a complete newbie to streaming. Um, this is probably my second stream on Twitch and uh, and YouTube, so this is all new to me. As you know, I'm a, a real life uh, challenger corporate jet captain, and uh, thanks for coming along. And I'm definitely not a first person shooter type kind of game player, so I'll, I'll make my best of uh, W A S D uh, commands here. So as you as you know, we would uh, come up to the aircraft door, open it up. So how do we do that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to a slideshow here now, and hopefully that works for you. And what we're going to do is uh, kind of go back and forth between the Hot Start Challenger 650, which is an incredible representation of the real aircraft, just to let you know that it really, really is. It, it is a incredible representation of the real aircraft. So here we go with the slideshow. So what you're looking at here is, a, in fact, a real Challenger 650 um, door. And um, as you can see, uh, there's a bunch of signs that are that are on there. As we move up to the door itself, I'm going to place our finger onto the push button. And when we do that, what's going to happen, just like in the, the Hot Start 650, uh, the plunger is going to pop out. So you can see it's popped out there. And when that happens, this door opened up as well. So if there was pressurization in the aircraft, it would be venting at this point. And uh, this is a safety feature so that before this is turned, because it's in a locked position, this opens up and it would prevent the door from flying open if the aircraft were happened to be pressurized for some reason. Um, obviously a rare thing to happen, but uh, it, that's how it works. So there is a little bit closer. So again, we pushed on the push button. Uh, if the door was locked, and it usually would be if we were away from base, if and uh, unlock it, uh, push push this in here. Sometimes this sticks quite a bit because of um, if we're outside, there could be condensation and that kind of thing, and you have to get a little bit, little bit of a tap, uh, just a you know just a little bit of a tap, and it'll pop open for you. So here we go. Yeah, so lots of interesting sounds as you could hear there. So this door is actually rather heavy. Uh, one giant large piece that, that moves um, through a bunch of hinges, a bunch of pulleys and that type of thing. And when that's occurring, I'll just pause this here for a second. When that's occurring, you're going to see or you're going to hear all of the the pulleys moving, all of the cables moving, and that's all kind of the the grinding and everything that you can hear there. That's very normal. And which is really cool because you can actually hear that on the Challenger 650 with hot start, which uh, just really goes to show the amount of effort that's been put in. So as I said, typically the walk around begins, the safety inspection begins in the aircraft and the next thing you're gonna do is move to the outside. So what would have happened is you've gone in, you've checked the flight deck, done the safety inspection there, check the circuit breakers, uh, fire axe and all those other things, check the cabin, make sure that all the, the life vests, uh, pull tabs are visible and all the other things that we'll go through tomorrow. Once you have that all completed, a couple things you're going to do is you're going to grab some gloves um, because you are going to touch the lav door. So we're going to grab those and uh, I typically put them on for most of the walk around because there are some very oily areas on the aircraft. Um, definitely the main landing gear and the some of the other components of the aircraft can be quite uh, oily as well. So we'll, uh, we'll look at those. And um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to open the door itself. So I'll just go back to the aircraft here for a second. So we're going to open the aircraft door. So we've done the procedure that we just talked about. I'm going to grab it. 
it's going to make all the noises that uh, that we heard on the on the other video. Okay, so we can just move to the side here. And there is some representation of um, the pulleys and that type of thing, but you're going to see a much more detailed, uh, well, the real door here in a second. And what I'm doing, just so you're aware of, is I'm looking at all of the components of the door. I'm specifically looking at the, the piano hinge, which is going to be back in this section here. And then I'm looking very carefully, and you're going to see a couple videos here shortly, of the door seal itself. The door seal is extremely important. Um, it basically, well, it holds in the pressurization of the aircraft. Um, and uh, if it's not in good condition or there's nicks or tears, that's going to cause uh, not necessarily depressurization, but it's going to cause um, a loud whistling sound, which can be rather annoying uh, to the passengers. So we'll go back to the slideshow. Okay, so I'm pointing at the piano hinge at this point. So this is a hinge that runs all the way across and you can see it rather well when the door is actually uh, in the closed position. Uh, the, the, um, the different attachment points here, I'm gonna have a look at that. Um, I'm gonna look at all the different wiring that's inside there and we'll just continue with the video here. So looking very carefully at the door seal making sure that there's no nothing for an object or anything like that inside making sure that uh, everything's in good condition it's a big thick seal coming all the way around looking at the door locks and then you can see the different um, mechanisms that are there what i'm going to do now is i'm going to pick the door up the door is um it's it's heavy but um you know i'd use my knee here to brace it as we come along, we're just looking for, again, any foreign damp objects or anything that's going to cause uh, the seal not to work. There we go. Another detailed look. All the cables and pulleys. Make sure the cables are on the pulley itself. They're not off. This is a very new aircraft. Whatever newest of the fleet. Again, looking really carefully. So I'll just come back here a little bit. Okay, so we can see the pulleys here. Um, the door, there's there's a whole bunch, this is a very complicated mechanism and a lot of engineering obviously went into it. Uh, there's the actual door handle. So when the, when the aircraft door is closed, um, as the door closes shut, as you've seen probably in the 650 when you're inside, you're going to grab this uh, red handle and move it to the down position. And uh, to open it, you lift it up. Um, the other thing that you might see here is just a peculiar little door here. Uh, if I had uh, some people on the stream, it'd be awesome to ask some questions. Maybe we could interact a little bit. What you're looking at here is um, our holder for all of our gear pin. Uh, there's four gear pins. Correction, there's three gear pins themselves. And there's also an ADG safety pin that all goes in here we open this up it's kind of like a tube and we store all of those in flight and uh, actually when we land we if we're, we're doing a quick turn we're, we're not going to repin the aircraft but if we're shutting down for the day one of the very first things we're going to do is we're going to pop out um, make obviously the passengers are, are, are gone at this point uh, and we're going to pin the gear and the ADG and um, make sure that the aircraft is chalked and those kind of things and um, we're going to continue uh, whatever we're going to do for the shutdown but from here I just wanted to point that out because that is something we use a lot okay continuing the inspection 
Okay, a good look at the piano hinge here. Piano hinges on the top, door seal. Uh, one of the other things we want to look at too is that that these cables are are not frayed in any way. Um, all of these um, nuts and bolts are all connected. There's no leaking and and that kind of thing. So that looks like a pretty good inspection. Hopefully you agree. So this is the back side of the door now. So this is the really good view of the, the, of the piano hinge. There's the piano hinge. Typically how a piano hinge works is you have um, an interior and an exterior portion of the hinge. And then there's a pin that runs all the way down and then it allows the hinging to occur. So there you go. There's the mechanism of the door lock mechanism. And please, um, if if you happen to be on the stream chat, I uh, really encourage you to ask as many questions as you can. Uh, again, this is going to be a rather detailed walk around. Okay. Let's go back to the aircraft itself. Our awesome 650 hot start. Okay, so we've done a really awesome inspection here. Um, you can see our pull handle, which is used um, by the crew. There's, there's a couple ways to close this door. One is manually, and one there, I believe it, it might be an option on some aircraft, but everyone that I've ever flown has an electric door closer as well. So kind of in this area up here, there's a push button and you ensure that everything is clear this this is stowed and uh, you press the button the entire door mechanism comes up and as it comes up you grab uh, you put your hand in here you're standing up here you put your hand in here pull the door towards you and then let's move over here a little bit Sorry, some technical challenges there. Um, so this handle, you're going to be standing up here. You pull this towards you as the mech the mech the door mechanism, the motor is moving it up to help you. Then you grab it and then pull it in. Grab this handle and lock it. The next thing you do is lift this cover right here and um, pull this. And what that is going to do, it's going to retract a plunger that's on here and um, complete the door locking process at that point. Okay, so that's kind of it for the door and you can see there's there's quite a bit to the door itself. So, um, you know, there's quite a few uh, considerations for the door. Just getting staged for my next slide, which is going to be The left nose area okay so starting from this area here on the hot start 650 you've got um, this little green indicator so we'll look at that in on the slide here in a minute and we're also going to look at a few other things we're going to look at the the aux AOA gauge we're going to look at um, the primary pedo secondary pedo and i uh, will ask you what that is maybe, maybe maybe you'll know and hopefully you do so we'll head back over to the slides here for a second slideshow there we go okay so the aircraft could be configured with two oxygen bottles or maybe a really big one and this challenger 650 that we're looking at actually has a really big one i don't have the exact size available uh, at this moment but I can certainly look that up for you. What we're looking for here is that this little relief 
um, or this little plastic insert that is in here is in fact there. If it's not there, that means that there's been uh, some type of pressure relief occurrence that's occurred with our oxygen system. And we would expect that if this is gone, we're going to read probably zero on our indicator. And we're going to have an indicator inside the flight deck on the MFD. And we're also going to have an external good old manual gauge that we'll look at here in a little bit. Okay. So what we're looking at here now is the AOA gauge. And I'm going to move it um, very carefully with my hand. And um, these, these a couple other points here. These little points that you can see here, these are attachments for the covers that go on the various uh, uh, systems on the outside. So there you go. And you can see this AOA is matching up with the AOA that, that's been put on here by, uh, by uh, Bombardier when it uh, first was manufactured. So this is the static port. Um, I'm sure you're aware of how important static ports are. Um, they're going to measure things typically to do with altitude or vertical speed in the aircraft. Um, kind of a little bit different from a Cessna or that kind of thing. How how a Challenger and typical business jets and maybe even airliners operate is you're going to have an air data computer. And you'll have ADC 1 and 2 on the aircraft. And one of the... The very first flights that I did in, in the Hot Start Challenger 650, I actually had an ADG failure that I believe I probably created myself. I thought it was a you know some kind of cool uh, failure that, that occurred, but I think what it was actually was I was kind of fumbling around the flight deck and um, I might have actually put on the cover for the pitot tube. Um, from inside which which is obviously impossible but the touch point may have been off and 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 anyways so very very important the static ports are not blocked there's no damage around them this is a very critical area if we talk about rvsm and our operational capability for that which is one of the main things we want to look at is that the static ports are clear there's no damage around them and uh, there's no obstructions to them in any way. So obstructions that we could possibly see. Um, if the aircraft is washed and it was not washed by a professional, they may put tape over top of this. And typically they do do that, but they'll, they'll create a streamer. They'll put a, like a red tag and a streamer over top. They'll put the tape over top of it and the streamer over top of it to say, hey, this really has to come off, don't forget. Now, I can't remember the exact Mayday episode, but there definitely was a Mayday episode where a, I believe it was a 757 crash in, in um, Lima, Peru after takeoff because there was a washing that was done of the aircraft. And, um, you know, this is a little bit on the crew as well, but um, there wasn't a inspection done uh, thorough, thorough, thorough enough and I believe it actually was at night, so it would have been extremely hard to see a piece of clear tape. So not to blame the crew in any way, but you really have to be... I, I always take my flashlight, um, and I should have mentioned this before, but before we got out of, the, uh, out of the flight deck, I now have my flashlight in hand. And it's a big, powerful one, or a flashlight or a torch, if you happen to be from England. And we're making sure very, very carefully that things like that need to be uncovered or or there's no blockages are in fact free and clear using our our hands physically making sure there's uh, nothing on on this area and also um, having a look at it visually very carefully. Okay, so here's um, the the side of the aircraft just like we're looking in the. Uh, uh, on the Hot Start 650. So we've now looked at, um, this is a, a boarding light here. We've looked at um, our static port, our AOA. 
Um, we haven't quite looked at this yet. I think we have a slide for that. So our auxiliary pitot tube, as you can see, it's it has been very hot at one point. As as you're full of, fully aware, they get very hot um, to ensure that no icing would occur on them. It's a mandatory thing prior to takeoff, and you'll actually get a cast warning for it. You can try it yourself on the 650 on the hot start. Is that the the probes must be on prior to takeoff, and um, the probes and windshields would would have to be on at that point. Next thing you're looking at is the main pitot tube, and as you can see, it's been pretty hot. And um, we can we can see discoloration. Uh, obviously, we're looking for whether it be this pitot tube or this pitot tube that the hole in the front is absolutely clear. So I'm going to shine my flashlight in there. I'm physically going to touch it. It's not hot at this point because I mean the airplane hasn't flown. Uh, so making sure I'm really into the tactile thing, making sure that things are in fact correct and. Um, so if, if I had you on uh, stream chat, what I'd be asking you is what the heck is this thing? This is a very unique thing um, to the Challenger. Uh, there, These are on other aircraft, obviously, but this is our ice detector. This is ice detector number one, and there's an ice detector number two. Ice is not our friend in flight. We want to be very, very careful about um, accumulating ice. We have a limitation on the aircraft that if we have um, above 22,000 feet, if we have an ice indication, uh, we have to turn on all of our, our anti-ice equipment. So our um, engine inlet, anti-ice, and our wings. So this is the probe itself. There's not a lot to, to really um, do here, but you can see it looks like a, an, a, a wing and there's a probe this sticks out here and basically it determines if there's ice um, detected and through through an electronic process and then it lets us know when there's a cast warning that would come up okay so we've now had a look at all these things here they're all looking great while we're here just like we can do on the 650 which we'll do here in a second we're looking at all the window panels here. So we're making sure that they are in good shape. There's no bird strikes. Um, there's no da obvious damage to the, to the panels. You can see all of the fasteners that are on here. And if you happen to look up, as, as you can probably tell, I'm a bit of a Mayday fan. Um, there was an episode, I believe, of a, a BAC 111, BAC 111, taking off out of England where the um, the, the one of the window panels was replaced uh, overnight and unfortunately they didn't put the right fasteners in and once the aircraft became pressurized the entire window panel blew out in flight and the captain was partially sucked out of the window and and uh, yeah, you know basically frozen at high altitude and he lived and uh, absolutely incredible mayday uh, for you to check out sometime Okay, so now we're just about it to get into um, the nose bay area. And so we've already looked at the, the pedos, ice detectors, the fuselage. There's no deformities. There's no, no one hit us in, in the middle of the night with, it, with um, some kind of object in the hangar. Believe, believe me, that happens. Um, you really want to look for even the obvious signs. So one thing I learned many, many years ago from... A wise flight instructor was always stand back away from the aircraft enough so you can see the whole thing and 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 have a look at it and when you look at it what you're looking for is any deformities and does it simply look correct um, something may not jump out at you right away until you actually step back and have a look so we'll do that on the real aircraft or sorry on the um, on the 650 now and uh, back up a little bit here oh, we got a 
Nice 727 look on us there. There we go. Okay, so the real aircraft, as you can see, what we've just looked at is extremely close to this uh, incredible model that uh, Hot Start put out. So we've looked at all of these components here. They all look good to us. Now we're going to come to this area, and there's a lot of things in here. Um, one of the things that um, I forgot to do while and you know while we're preparing for our walk around was to actually go get a ladder. This is um, a fairly I'm six foot four and uh, I can barely reach I can almost reach the battery uh, connection in the in the nose here and uh, it uh, it's it's a little bit cumbersome but it, it is possible so um, I'll come back to our slideshow so now we're here and we can see that the panel here is actually open and for some silly reason in the video and the next thing I actually lock it um, and then try and open it which is kind of silly um, so we want to make sure that this is uh, we're gonna take our, our key um, we're gonna make sure it's open we're gonna open these two uh, latches and this entire um, panel will hinge open there's the key. So I'm actually going to um, come back to that one. There we go. Key is in. I actually lock it. And this is kind of silly. But then I, I, I try and open them. So what we're doing is we're opening up this panel. Just, just so you know exactly what we're doing here. We're opening this panel right here. And I'll just come to back to the look at our aircraft here. So I believe this is modeled. Actually, sorry, this is one of the things that is, as far as I'm aware, not is is not modeled. So you would put your key in here, open it up, and open these two uh, click points. This would hinge open, and then we have a battery that that is inside here. So I'll just be, let you hang out here just for a second. I'm just going to head over to my slides for a second and uh, have a look at our next group. And please comment if you can on the, um, on the walk around, that would be really great. just about looking at the we're in the nose panel section here now okay so we've gone and got our ladder from the back and we've opened up the panel and we're going to look at a couple things here make sure we get the slides in the right order show you what this uh let's kind of bounce around here this is a little bit cumbersome but uh here here are the the two doors open now and uh i might have to move back and forth here slip back here a little bit okay so now we've opened this up and we op could opt optionally um, use this little extender rod here and so it pops out of here flips up comes into here and what we're looking at initially is an inspection of our two TRUs our transformer rectifier units which are right here which are converting uh, DC power to AC power so the electrical um, most of the electrical systems on the aircraft are AC powered and we use transformer rectifier units to convert um, direct battery power to 
um, usable AC power. So in here, there's the two TRUs on this side. Uh, we're looking for any soot um, and that kind of thing that would show that you know this is this TRU is uh, you know had its nearing its end of days. Um, soot could be down here. There could be some kind of debris, that kind of thing. We're looking for you know a really good clean looking unit, making sure that all of the wires are in good shape that are all the way around it. Um, these are the tow bar head for this 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 is the tow bar head this is the locking mechanism for the tow bar head uh, here's the top mechanism for that lock and here is the actual tow bar it's collapsible and it's portable so we want to make sure uh, there's a video coming up of uh, me grabbing onto both of these to make sure that they're not going to come undone in flight they're heavy they would cause a lot of damage to extremely expensive and vital equipment including our radar which is up here and obviously our TRUs uh, all of the things that we would definitely not want to, to have um, damaged. Our battery is in the front so this is a very small battery but a very vital battery. There's a whole bunch of things going on with this battery um, in order to conduct a aft um, equipment bay inspection in order to turn those lights on back there this battery has to be turned on so typically we're going to go grab that little ladder there's a plug which is right here i don't know if we can see it maybe in the next slide maybe a little bit better the plug gets pressed into the side of the battery and there's a rotary knob that locks it into place and then i kind of grab the entire thing and shake it to make sure it's not going to come undone so there we go. I'm grabbing onto each each piece, making sure that they're okay. And here's a video. There we go. There's the there's a TRU talking about the soot, make, looking for any damages to the TRU wires. And there is the battery connection right there. So I'm gonna push it. There's a pin. I push it in. Um, falls into a lock or into a, a um, the female receptacle and then I rotate the um, the locking mechanism and, and give it a pull to make sure it's not going to come undone all batteries on aircraft are all vented so this is a a vent for battery acid gases and that kind of thing uh, to be vented overboard the aircraft and definitely not into the cabin uh, there's a whole bunch of sensors that are on this battery as well and we want to ensure uh, maintenance wants to ensure that this this battery is in top shape at all times so we disconnect it for every single flight after we're done the two batteries this one and the one in the the aft equipment bay so here's now the other side and there's quite a few slides here um, we're looking at junction box number six i believe in in the front here and uh there we go jump jb6 you can see it right there we're looking for um all of the circuit breakers to be in uh, we're also inspecting this uh, tow bar on this side to make sure it's locked in place and we're checking the two tru's that are on this side there's the two tru's there's one, two, three, four, and each one is rated to 100 amps maximum. And uh, making sure all these wiring bundles are in good shape, making sure that the all the uh, battery direct buses are 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 in good shape. Um, some of the things that could be a problem here is a battery charger uh, failure. I have actually had this happen. Um, and uh, it is something that can be deferred, actually, but there's a limitation on uh, the, the deferral process of it. Again, making sure everything is all good in this compartment. Circuit breakers are in, and uh, everything is looking good. Good look at the TRUs again. Transformer rectifier unit. 
one of the things I might mention is if we're running the avionics for a long time, uh, if say we're, we're doing some type of ground run or something or not a ground run, but we're doing some kind of work inside the flight deck, this area gets very hot and uh, we want to make sure that the cooling fans are doing uh, a good enough job. So we typically will open these up if they're doing um, a long uh, extended run of uh, the avionics in here in the aircraft okay so that is a a good look at these two panels so we've looked in here and we've had a really good look at both sides here we've locked them back up one thing i didn't mention um, my company is very particular about ensuring all the panels that we open up spe specifically um, the nose doors um, a correction these these panels here are locked um, the oxygen and a bunch of other panels as we'll look at as we do our walk around okay so next thing we're going to look at we're kind of we're going to crunch down here. We can notice that, well, these bay doors are closed. So I'm doing a pre-flight inspection. How would, how would I even open these up? Well, I'm going to have to power the aircraft up with hydraulics somehow and then open these up. This would not be like this if the aircraft hadn't flown. If, if the aircraft had flown during the day, and uh, you know we were sitting for a couple hours, that kind of thing. We typically wouldn't open the the the, um, the nose bay uh, to to pin the aircraft. We would just chalk it. But in this case here, we want to have a re really detailed look in here. So we're going to start looking at making sure that all of this area here is uh, in good condition. There's no obvious uh, dents or anything in the radome. These lights are in good condition that are in here. These latches are all on here. And these strips are all in good shape. And these strips are um, a static strip to help with the, um, uh, the radar. I believe it reduces the amount of static electricity that's on the radome, which would cause issues with the uh, radar return signal. I could be a little bit off there. Maybe you know yourself. Okay, so we're going to have another look at some slides here in just a second. Just admire the nose cone of the Challenger 650 once again. And uh, we're going to look at... the nose bay. Okay. So again, continuing our very detailed inspection here. So now we're looking at the taxi lights in the front and uh, our radar units up here. Um, this is just, this is highly magnified. Um, what you're seeing here is uh, is about six, six inches wide, approximately. So the light lenses are in good shape on both sides here. And um, the next thing we're, we're looking at is inside the bay. So you can see both landing gear doors are open. And they are hydraulically operated so there's a whole bunch of mechanisms in here so there's a hydraulic cylinder connected to a bunch of push rods that you can see here and this is what opens and closes the landing gear bay doors while we're here looking to make sure that all of the components in here are in good shape specifically there's a lot of hydraulic components in here making sure there's no leaking um, 
if if you were on the chat i'd be asking what color hydraulic fluid is so aerosol uh, hydraulic fluid is typically red so it's very visible to the crew and it's also highly corrosive you do not want to get it on your hands it's it's not a good thing okay so now we're taking looking very carefully here so we're looking at uh, the nose gear here now um, quite a bit of mechanism there's a hinge point that's up here so this is going to be a point where it, it's highly greased so these are grease nipples that are on here um, sometimes there's a lot of over greasing that that occurs um, as you know i fly multiple aircraft uh, the 605 and the 650 and i've flown many other different aircraft sometimes over greasing is is a normal thing um, it, it is annoying from a pilot perspective because you're like, you know, covered in it all the time. But, um, you know, it, it does keep things from um, seizing up. But uh, you want to make sure that all of this is in good shape. There's no foreign objects in here. There's no birds hanging out or anything like that during your, your long stay. All of the hydraulic components that you see here... Um, this is part of the uh, the nose door closing mechanism. These are the hydraulic lines for it. Uh, no, there's no leaking that's occurring. The springs that you can see here are all in good shape. Uh, nothing is broken. Everything, there's no broken components in here. Everything looks very clean. So during our walk around, uh, of the nose bay area we're going to look at the nose gear brake accumulators so there's a system two and a system three and um their the pressures that they need to be at is between 700 and 800 psi and that pressure is not how much pressure is on the system when it's operating but it's how much system pressure um correction the pressure of the brake accumulator when there's no system load on it an accumulator basically is like a shock absorber for a hydraulic system what it does is there and there's multiple on this aircraft is it, it dampens out any hydraulic shocks that are occurring so um, as the landing gear go up and down um, there's a whole bunch of load that's occurring we want it all to be smooth and the accumulator helps with that. And again, it kind of acts like a, a buffer and um, provides um, a shock absorber effect for the entire system. So having a look, um, so this is the nose here. This is the, the rear of the aircraft here. So there's a, there's a light in here that we can turn on for inspection i typically don't use it i use uh, just a flashlight um, these are the accumulators here this is the the labeling for the accumulator so system two system three almost all systems on the aircraft specifically flight controls all have dual redundancy systems so um, the the ailerons have two systems two hydraulic systems to independent hydraulic systems uh, that are feeding them and uh, the the rudder does and the elevator does so we'll talk about that in a bit this is the up lock mechanism so when the landing gear, the nose gear comes up it locks into this mechanism here and this would be the up lock um, PSEU so this is a position sensor so as the nose gear comes up and locks into place there'd be another this is a PSEU as well to show that the nose uh, the nose uh, bay doors are closed um, it basically it looks for how close the sensor is to uh, whatever the the target is so if it's target near or, or target far uh, it'll either say gears op down and locked or or this component is open or whatever it may be but the PSEUs are monitored uh, by the computers of the aircraft and this is what would allow us to have a cast message occur that would say something like uh, nose bay door uh, nose gear 
sorry, gear bay door open. And uh, that would be the cast message. Uh, all of these hydraulics uh, lines here, we're making sure that they're all in really good shape. There again, there's no red fluid. And you can see, I mean, they're, they're fairly fragile. So something hit them, um, you know, some kind of foreign object that got thrown up during takeoff, they, they possibly could be damaged. So we want to make sure we're doing due diligence and making sure that all of these components are in good shape. Looking back at um, the spring, all the different sensors, hydraulics, so we did mention, um, I did mention the ADG uh, air driven generator or the RAT, Ram Air Turbine. So what this uh, little pin does, and this is on the left hand side of the nose bay, is, and I mentioned to you before that there's four pins that, that we make sure are, um, are, have been put away prior to takeoff. As part of our check, we ask, um, it'll ask something like, um, four pins and we'll confirm that there's four pins are secured and stowed into that little box that I was showing you uh, on the uh, on the stairs this pin is removed as you can see it's removed from this hole right here this is a safety pin for our air driven generator um, I will put a link in to the show notes that will show an ADG deployment in a hangar and basically what it is, it's a ram air turbine that would fall out of um, um, out of the right side nose bay, which I'll show you uh, on the, the Hot Start 650 here in a second. And uh, this would provide for emergency power. And uh, emergency power also provides us for emergency power for a hydraulic system as well. So... It's, a it's very critical that all of the systems, especially during a, a dual engine flame out, um, critical loss to our hydraulic or to our electrical system, we're down to only um, our essential bus is, is powered. Um, then the ADG will automatically drop out without us even doing anything. It'll sense that there's a problem. It'll drop out. It's going to make a whole bunch of noise because it's basically like a little propeller and um, I believe this may be modeled on the on the aircraft I have not tried that um, I have tried it on other uh, simulation like the Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, CRJ 700 900 I've, uh, it does work on that so it may work on here you'll you'll have to let me know so there's the pin this is part of the four pins that that we talk about uh, that we have on board Another really good look at the PSEU and also the service, the ADG uh, safety pin. So uh, here's the PSEU head and all the, the detector um, wiring. This is the nose gear safety pin. Um, this is one of the three pins on the landing gear. This is removed by pushing this little button in and the entire pin pops out. It's quite small. And this prevents um, inadvertent landing gear retraction when the system is not pressurized during ground handling. So before anyone touches our aircraft, we ensure that all the pins are in. That's one of the first things that we do. Um, we, we get out of the aircraft, people depart, and as we're getting the aircraft ready to uh, basically to put it to bed, uh, the first thing we'll do is come out of the aircraft, come around to the right side nose, open up the ground power unit door, which I'll show you here in just a second. And um, we'll push the, there's a switch inside, which is the gear bay, a nose gear bay door um, actuator, and that'll open up the doors hydraulically. Uh, that will allow us to put the pin in here, and that will then secure the nose for um, ground handling. More mechanisms to look at here. So looking at this, um, this is part of the, the nose steering system. 
which is rather complicated. Um, Bombardier went with a steer by wire. You've heard fly by wire. Well, this is steer by wire. So the tiller on the captain's side is a uh, a tiller that doesn't have any elect have physical connection to the the nose gear itself. It's an electrical um, computer control system that has its own monitoring uh, system that uses this component right here. There's one here and one on the other side, kind of a shuttle that moves hydraulic pressure on either side of it and allows the, the nose uh, gear to turn within its limitation. Let's have a look at that. I'm just grabbing some notes here, having a quick look. Uh, what else can I tell you here? Well, we can look at uh, our nose gear wheels. These are very special wheels. They have a chine on the outside. This chine is uh, designed to prevent FOD, foreign object damage of our engines. So as the aircraft is uh, rolling down the runway at you know very high speed, the, the amount of debris that, that could be flown up into the engine I mean, it's quite a distance. It's probably near 50 feet um, from from the nose up back to the engine, maybe a little less. Um, this prevents that. The chine prevents that. So we're having a look at the the nose. Uh, both both wheels or so both tires, making sure that they're really good condition. As you can see, these are almost brand new. Um, we're having to look at uh, the side and making sure all the bolts are uh, sorry all the nuts are lock wired there's no damage and um, everything looks really really good just having a quick look at some notes here so I've got a couple notes I've got uh, the nose oleo should be um, this area right here, three to eight inches of chrome exposed at all times. And uh, nose gear plus or minus 55 degrees. That's, uh, that's turning degrees. And um, what else we got here? I think that's about it for that move along here there's me removing the pin for the nose the nose uh, nose gear here's a really good look at the steering system again steer by wire hydraulically actuated electrically controlled hydraulic lines coming down here this is the actual actuator hydraulic pressure on either side and uh, PSEU Really good look at that. There's your steering scale. This is where a tow bar hooks on to. There's a really good look at the wheel. So we're making sure that all the nuts are in good good condition. Uh, the pin is in here. We've got a locking pin on here as well. You can see this is all done up with safety wire really good look at it here's our PSEU um, for the nose gear this again this is where the tow bar would attach onto so now we're looking uh, we've we've done our inspection of the nose area 
and we're looking back aft. So we're starting to look at the bottom of the aircraft to make sure that all of our different antennas, and there's a whole bunch of them, uh, are all in good shape. I have seen aircraft in the past where um, they're damaged, and that would indicate that something's hit them. I've actually seen uh, an ATR-72 with um, panels, or correction, uh, radio antennas completely missing because the uh, there was a uh, low-speed um, landing that occurred which caused a tail strike and well it wasn't a really good thing okay we've already had a look at all these things I'm just gonna zip right through them make sure that we've covered everything and that all looks good so we're gonna head back out to the aircraft okay so we've had a really good look now if if we're actually um, operating the aircraft one of the things that will once once all these checks are completed then we're going to go in the aircraft and do start our checks in the flight deck we'll actually have to come out and close the um the doors the, the nose gear doors here okay grab that and have a really good look this incredible aircraft just doing some slide switching here as you can well imagine okay Okay, we're just about there, folks. Thanks for your patience. So, slideshow, we're, before we get there, we're gonna look now, we've had a look at this. Um, we haven't looked at this yet, but we're, we're gonna do that here very, very shortly. So this is our oxygen uh, panel to make sure, uh, to, to have a look at how much oxygen the uh, the tank has in it as I also mentioned that is also indicated on our MFD electronically so now we're we're gonna look at this we're gonna look at this and we're gonna complete our inspection of the identical items except for this which is uh, we'll come to in a minute uh, everything that was on the on the left hand side okay so now we've we're at the oxygen panel here now. We talked about the ADG. This is the air driven generator door. So it's kept and held in place by that safety pin, which is inside of here. This would open up. And again, I'll post a, um, a video of this being deployed uh, for ground testing purposes. I believe every year or two years we, we have to go, I can't remember the exact number, but I know that we actually have to go up do a flight and drop the ADG in flight and um, and I've only heard it from either on videos or in in simulation while I was uh, at the Bombardier um, slash CAE training facility in Montreal um, it is uh, it, it is modeled in that uh, category D simulator So we don't want to hang around this area because if the ADG pops open and it comes out with a lot of force because it has to overcome the airflow. Um, so I imagine there's springs and that kind of thing in there. Um, you, you just don't want to hang around that area. So here's the oxygen service door. And I believe I have an ox pictures of the oxygen servicing uh, door here in a second. So there's the actual door. Um, one of the points I want to make, any time you see these on a real aircraft, what you want to do is put your one of your fingers on this area of the 
of the of the latch which is a spring loaded latch hold it with your finger and then press onto the top part this will will release the spring loaded section and just allow it to come down um, without snapping down because what you can do is you can rip off the paint you can flip um, uh, paint can be uh, flaked off of here and you don't want to really want to do that on a 20 million dollar jet okay so this is the um, ground power unit um, plug-in for AC power and this is also the location for the nose uh, gear bay door um, open and closing switch is inside of there as well so there we go so the the large um, plug-in for ground power unit and this is the gear bay door hydraulically um, or the hydraulic switch the electric switch for the the hydraulic actuators so this is in the safety position right now which is down and um, so we leave this in the safety position um, whenever the aircraft is outside or sorry in the hangar and uh, once there's hydraulic pressure on the aircraft and we've done all, all of our checks and it's completely clear then we'll flip this switch up and we'll hear a uh, hydraulic system come on and the doors will slam shut and we definitely want to not be in that area so here is um, this isn't a PSEU but this is a a micro switch to, um, which would indicate that this is open in flight it's one of the sensors that we're gonna have on anything that opens up in flight has a sensor on it and here's a really good look at the the locking mechanism so you can see there's a spring and there's actually two springs so there's quite a bit of force so when you when you push on the, the release mechanism here this will spring open with quite a bit of force and again that can uh, destroy paint another good look at it another good look at the nose gear so now we're having a look at the uh, right side pitot tube you can see all the discoloration from the heat again taking your flashlight having a look down the uh, the pitot tube making sure that there's no debris bugs that kind of thing bugs love to go in here wasps love to go in here so this is the tat probe or the total air temperature probe and this is um, one of the probes that we have on the aircraft that uh, measures temperature and it is um, has quite a few functions as far as uh, the uh, uh, it, it's it's one of the temperatures that's displayed on our um, P, our our PFD. So we'll have uh, outside air temperature, our sat temperature, our saturated air temperature, and our tat temperature. This is our auxiliary angle of attack vane, and I believe I have a video coming up. Here's the right side angle of attack vane, and the right side static port, not a super great picture, there it is. Again, making sure no tape, no debris, no damage in the area. Uh, right side um, ice detector. Looking at the panels, uh, the windows here, they're all in good shape. Everything all looks in good shape there. So I'm rotating, apologize for the, for the strobe effect here. There is a, uh, a snow removal truck outside. So this is heated and it rotates, um, as you can see, back and forth. Um, not exactly sure how it works but it is an angle of attack indicator as well okay back outside so we've had a really good look in this nose area and I know we've spent a whole bunch of time here now uh, we've had making sure these are all locked we've looked at our oxygen um, I don't know if I have a, an actual um, picture for that but 
you've seen it modeled. I can actually look at it right here. So we walk up to it. Again, I showed you how to do this for keeping the aircraft um, in good shape. Lift it up and we can check our oxygen quantity. And right here, it's not looking too great. So we definitely would be calling for servicing here. And uh, here's a servicing um, attachment point. This is brass. And um, as I'm sure you're aware, we want to make sure that there's absolutely no uh, petroleum type grease or anything like that in this area. This that could potentially cause a fire during the refilling process. Close that up. Lock them up. So we're, we've had a really good look at all of this. You can see the nose wheel, incredible modeling. I mean, we just looked at real slides here. This looks exactly like it. It's incredible. Incredible work, hot start. Okay, so now we've looked at all of this area here, and now we're going to start looking at this area. So, in this area here, this area is um, very important. So this is the, there's only, there's a primary emergency exit is, is the main cabin door, and I explained to you, um, you know, how to open and close that with a red handle. Um, you know, you lift the handle up, push the door out and exit the aircraft. If that is blocked for some reason, or we're doing a, a water landing, a ditching, then this is the emergency exit that we would be using. And um, the door, I don't have the exact, I want to say it's around 50 pounds approximately. So it does weigh a fair amount. Sometimes there, there's um, cushions, um, pillows, or, you know, even part of, uh, like, not a door, but there's areas, there, there's components that could be in front of this area that would have to be removed before the plastic cover that is on the top, I'm talking inside the aircraft here, is removed, and the handle is pulled, and then the entire door is pulled in and put onto the um, divan and then you exit out onto the wing. Now when that type of situation were occur in emergency, all of these lights would turn on as you can see here. And these are emergency lights that would provide for um, a good view of the wing during a night condition, um, possibly ditching, that kind of thing. Okay, so the next thing we're looking at here is the refueling system, which is incredibly modeled. So here is the high pressure refueling uh, receptacle, uh, maximum 55 PSI the Challenger can take. Typically it's 50 PSI. They'll remove the cap that's on here and then hook up the hose. Once they're done, they'll put the cap back on and close it lock these two will then come out and and lock this and uh, that uh, is an important thing which I'll tell you about here in a second next thing we we generally this is cool this is modeled and it's it's really well modeled I'll just open it up here if I do it right there we go So it hinges out. So we had, we had the exact um, identical looking system on our aircraft, but we generally do not use this. And we really do not like when um, FBO fueling staff open this up. Um, we, we don't use it. And what the danger is of, is of them using it and, and not telling us that they, they did it uh, or, or touched it is that they may not close it properly and it may not be secured properly. So in, in this case here, 
as you can see, there's um, the main left and right um, tanks. We've got um, all of the different valves here. This is all controlled from the flight deck, which is right behind the first officer's head um, above it, which we'll look at in much more detail in the future here. So we'll just close this back up. Hopefully I can get it to go. There we go. We'd lock it uh, with this little pin here. Make sure all the switches are where we want them to be. Grab this, close it up, lock it. So there's um, just, I'll just reopen it here for a sec. So in real life, these are, when this is open, there's kind of like a, a rubber dam that goes around this. So it, it's actually quite a tight squeeze um, or as, as it like kind of pushing and pushing and then it finally locks and goes flush. The problem is though, is if you don't lock these carefully, um, there's a danger that they will look closed, but they're not. So I had an instance where this happened and uh, unf very fortunately, this was locked and that's what saved our day because um, we now lock all of our panels and I'll t there's, a, there's a really good reason why, why we do that. Um, I'll tell you in a sec here. But make sure we make sure that this this is always locked. So uh, I will physically, whether they've been touched or not, I will come up to it, lock, make sure that they're they're um, seated properly, both sides, and I'll give it a tap to make sure it's not going to pop open. And I also make sure it's locked. And we also make sure that uh, this is locked as well. That's kind of the fuel system. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to come and start looking at our leading edge and our lighting system here and our components that we have under here and there's a whole bunch more to go. So um, we're just going to take a, a quick little break here for a few minutes and then we'll be back real soon.
Hey, welcome back. Hope you had a drink of uh, your favorite beverage. I've already kind of gone over uh, most of the things I want to talk about as far as the fueling panel goes, but here's the real, the real one um, opened up. Uh, we were just looking to make sure that there's a, a light on this um, that would illuminate when the door is open. Uh, there's a warning system on this as well to make sure that we would know that it, that it's open in flight uh, or open. Uh, you can see the locking, locking mechanism that's right there. The locks are here, the thumb locks are here, and the, the lock is here. Okay, so here I am uh, opening it up. Uh, the we we we've, we've just done this, but uh, so you would turn this screw um, locking mechanism and then slide out the uh, the panel as uh, we we did on the hot start 650. I'm gonna close it back up. As you can see, it's kind of tight. I'm going to give it a bit of a, and then we lock it up. Okay. So that's um, the emergency exit. Uh, we want to make sure this is all in good condition. Um, there's no gaps along here. It looks like it's seated properly. Um, th there's no um, damages or anything like that to the to this area. Um, there's a lot of composite components on this aircraft. So this this area here is um, there's there's aluminum and composite mostly on, on the aircraft, and but there's there's a lot of uh, Areas that if they were impacted, even with you know a small amount of force, they they could cause it to crack, and that's really what we're we're having a look at. Just going to switch over slides here. Uh, we're going to look at the gear bay here next. Okay. So as you may or may not know, the, the main landing gear of the Challenger 650 and the 605s are extremely heavy duty. Um, they're large, they're large gear, um, and uh, they work very, very well. Uh, the, the gear themselves are actually, they do not have a cover over top of them, kind of like a 737 aircraft there's no actual cover that goes over the gear when it's inside the gear bay and because of that um, you can see this fairing that's on here it has this brush mechanism that's on here there's a brush here and there's also a brush on the um, right here so as the main landing gear retract the debris that could be on the wheels is um, brushed off and then the entire mechanism goes up into the gear bay bin which we'll look at here in detail. I typically start from the, f the front of the gear um, have a look at um, all the different hydraulic lines that are there making sure that there's no leaks. I have a look at both landing gear or both both uh, tires make sure that they're in really good shape there's no cuts in them there's no rocks sticking out of them um, they they look like they're in good shape if there's any doubt then we call maintenance over and have them have them look at them um, with my company I'm not allowed to check tire pressure uh, I think this is a pretty common thing 
Um, these are nitrogen filled tires. They're they're a really specialty thing that um, that needs to be done very very carefully. Um, so we we actually uh, as flight crew do not uh, check tire pressures ever. There's a couple things we can see here. So the outer portion of the wheel, um, all the 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 fasteners that are on there you can start to see the brake disc that's here um, all the hydraulic components here so we're looking at um, uh, we're at, look here so the oleo that we can see right here uh, has to be between 1.5 to 4 inches uh, exposed chrome and um, if we wanted to check the brake wear pins themselves, so there's there's pins that are exposed um, underneath here, we actually have to have hydraulic system two and three on, and then we apply the brakes, and we would come out and, and have a look to make sure that the pins are um, at the appropriate length. Otherwise, um, it's time for a brake change. Um, Components you can see her hydraulic braking pressure onto the discs that are on sorry a puck that pushes onto the disc and you can see those are all along here applying hydraulic pressure. This is all controlled by the brake control uh, system, the anti-lock brake control system on the aircraft, um, another computer system. Another good look at that. Starting to see more components up in this area, which we're going to look at in depth. So uh, now we're at the back, um, looking up into the gear bay well. So this is actually the bin here. So we'll, we'll see it here in more detail, but the bin itself is removable. And in behind the bin, there's a whole bunch of hydraulic components back there. Hydraulic lines, hydraulic systems, they're, they're all in the back. Um, this hydraulic ram has to have uh, room to move, so there's kind of a space for it to move, and there's a whole bunch of lines that are connected to it. There we go. Looking up, way up into there. You can see part of the bin here. and particular attention up here is the main landing gear overheat detection loop. Brake disc. So what we're looking at here now this is the same image except I've, I've got a flash on you can see this area right here goes all the way around and this entire bin can be removed so this is where the main landing gear actually goes up inside and uh, it would be rotating as it goes up um, all the all the debris gets brushed off with the brushes here and then this is the overheat detection loop that's right here so we have uh, during the testing that you'll see here, and I'm sure you've already done it uh, yourself, but one of the, the tests that we do is gear bay overheat. If we get an e a gear bay overheat in flight, our memory for that is to slow the aircraft down to 196, sort of correction, 197 knots, and to drop the landing gear. And um, then we're looking to make sure that the, the warning goes out and um, then once the landing gear is down and locked then we can speed back up to 250 knots with the landing gear in the down position but while they're extending or retracting 197 knots is the maximum speed so th this is normally pretty hard to see so uh, the the main landing gear would be right here i'm looking up with my flashlight at all of these different components that are in here. These are 
all potential leaking areas. So we want to make sure that there's no hydraulic fluid pooled down here. There's a whole bunch of PSEUs that are in here. Uh, lots of components are, are in here that that could be damaged. We want to make sure that everything is in really, really good condition. There's another really good view of the actual bin that the landing gear go up in and the overheat detection loop. Hydraulic, the main hydraulic um, actuator for the landing gear. The main landing gear. Wipers. Very, very heavy duty landing gear. So you can see very close, uh, very uh, well here that the, as the landing gear go up into the bottom of the Challenger, they are partially exposed and the wiper is a, it, it wipes the, uh, any debris off. It also provides a seal um, aerodynamic seal f for the um, for the gear. Okay, so we've had a really good look at the landing gear from the front and from the back. Uh, we've again, I start my inspection in the front. I'm looking at the brace here. I'm looking at all the components, all the lines that are down here. Nothing is frayed. Everything is all in good condition. I actually grab onto this fairing and give it a good um, pull to make sure it's all attached properly. And then once we're done that, we're going to start our inspection of the leading edge and we're going to go all the way down, all the way out to the, um, the right winglet. I'm just going to switch slides here, so please bear with me. Why don't we take a little break? I'll be right back very, very quickly.
Okay, welcome back. Continue our slideshow here. So um, now we're looking at uh, the right um, landing lights, we're making sure they're in good condition as we start our inspection of the leading edge on the right hand side. Looking underneath, underneath the, uh, the wing is a whole bunch of fuel component um, inspection points. So uh, we've got uh, one here and one at the far end of the aircraft. <clears throat> Here's one of the refueling uh, ground grounding points. Okay, so looking underneath the wing, you can see the flap canoes here. Kind of a, a feature of the of the Challenger series aircraft. These are inspection ports for the the fuel tank. Um, if you've never been around uh, aircraft before, a jet aircraft, um, whether it be King Airs or jets, they all t will have this same type of fueling cap. The fueling cap is important that it's um, that it's in good condition. Um, externally, looking at it, make sure that there's no leaking that's occurring. That this tab is down and locked and that this um, forward indicator is in fact forward and you can see that we have it in our in a locked position we rarely open this up and uh, it's used for uh, if we have a failure of our automatic fueling system along the leading edge and this is also modeled uh, on the hot start is the um, the bleed air uh, hot exhaust um, sorry I'm looking for the wing anti-ice system um, over pressurization venting and these are the vents on the bottom of the leading edge making sure that the leading edge is uh, is smooth there's no dents all the way down I want to make sure it's super smooth. Uh, none of the fasteners are coming out. One of the, the points that is kind of interesting about the Challenger and during during my training, I found out that this sealant that you can see here, which is kind of all over the aircraft, um, where the wing leading edge meets the wing or those kind of areas, if these are um, missing or disturbed in any way we actually take a performance hit and we would have to look at our performance information to determine how much of, of a performance hit we're that we're going to take um, continuing on down the wing having looking at the winglet making sure that it's in good condition there's no cracks um, Leading edge looks great. Have a look at the nav light, have a look at the strobe light, have a look at the cover. Again, looking at the uh, the winglet, making sure that the static probes are um, in good uh, condition. What would happen if we were missing one? Do you think we could go? What we'd have to do is consult what they call the CDL or the configuration deviation list and what that would do is determine what component, uh, in this case, uh, a missing static wick, um, how many could you be missing? Could you be missing any? And it would tell you how many you could be missing and, and uh, allow you uh, to go to your MEL, your minimum equipment list, and defer it for, um, for repair down the road. So. We do have a configuration deviation list, which is in the AFM, and that would determine uh, most components in the aircraft, including doors missing and like refueling doors and that kind of thing missing. Um, and that is uh, how we determine that. Now, if you've done walk arounds on Cessna aircraft and GA aircraft, one of the things that you do very commonly is uh, grab the aileron and give it a good move up and down 
to make sure all the hinge points are okay and and that is something we definitely do not do on an aircraft that has hydraulic flight controls as i mentioned each flight control has a a system uh, two systems going to it so we have a power control unit that's located uh, inside the wing and there'd be two hydraulic systems going to it for redundancy purposes excuse me just grabbing some water and because of that this is not something that moves as a matter of fact if you look very carefully you can see that there's a seal that goes all the way around and it's very tightly fit and uh, so that there's no disturbance with the airflow and uh, it has a, a very um, streamlined um, flow occurring so we don't really touch it uh, we just make sure that it's in good condition there's no damages to it all the static wicks are all there having a look underneath here now so the aileron PCU would be under in this area and you can see there's a little bit of weeping that's occurring here this is possibly um, not necessarily hydraulic fluid leaking but some type of uh, weeping that's occurring probably around the PCU area if we saw hydraulic fluid leaking out of here this this would be a problem and uh, we would have maintenance look at it you can see the seal that's on the aileron so this is like a rubber a rubber dam a rubber seal that's on the bottom of the aileron and it's the same type of seal that you see on the top and you can see more sealing during in the flap area this is one of the drains uh, uh, for during your pre-flight inspection you can pull on to this and uh, remove any remaining uh, air that's that's in the system uh, in the uh, collector tank a little bit of weepage you can see there looking back down underneath the wing looking for any obvious signs of fuel leakage along here I've seen that on other aircraft types very common to see fuel leaking out of these here just weeping out the flap canoes like they're in good condition again ceiling looks really good here ceiling is good here this is the top of the aileron again hinge points nothing's bent or broken seals look good so we're starting to look at the flap or the flap area they're very very large flaps um, each flap has a bunch of canoes that are located here and inside we have uh, flap actuators and uh, believe it or not there's only one flap motor and it's interconnected between the two flaps and the flap motor is is very is very small actually um, high pressure but small and there's a common shaft that drives both both the flaps up and down and uh, we can't really see that here because uh, it's all covered up with the canoes all the ca the canoes are in good condition looking really good so now we're on the top of the wing we're looking at um, the ground spoilers here ground spoilers so you can lift this up if you want um, it is a little bit tough it's a two-handed thing you're gonna grab a hand on both sides here and lift up and you can expose the 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 underneath the panel and you can see the the hydraulic actuator and um, this could be referred to as one of the quiet areas of the um, of the top of the wing meaning this could be an area where uh, con not condensation but uh, excess uh, uh, type 4 or type 1 um, icing or anti-icing fluid uh, could trap in here um, it's a very common common thing to have these uh, to stick a little bit um, if moisture gets into here the hydraulic pressure would normally be enough to, to pop them open 
if there's any as asymmetric um, and I should be referring to the flight spoilers, not the ground spoilers. If there's any um, asymmetric um, deployment, we will get a cast message that there's a spoiler issue. This is the NAC event underneath the wing, so it has to be clear. Uh, make sure that there's no that there's nothing blocking it. There we go. More views of the span the the flight spoilers and the ground spoilers. Okay. So back looking at this awesome plane again. So with our with our walk around, we've we've looked at the entire leading edge. Looks really really good. We've looked underneath had a look at all of this looks really really good we've already had a look at the the main landing gear next thing we're going to look at is this little panel right here it's gonna do a quick slide switch out here Okay. So we're now looking at, um, I believe this is hydraulic system number two's access panel. And uh, just like all other panels, we would unlock it to, to inspect it. Once we're done the inspection, we close it back up, we lock it. So inside we can see the hydraulic pump itself. We can see all the different lines going to it. The one thing that you're not going to see on this side though is you're not going to see an accumulator uh, pressure indicator because that's inside the aft pressure or the uh, inside the aft equipment bay which we're going to look at shortly. Um, so not too too much to look at here. Uh, again no leaking. Um, there isn't a college bottle which is inside of here which is uh, it's normal for hydraulic pumps to lose a little bit of oil through what they call case drain. And the, the case drain fluid would go into the ecology bottle and uh, would be then removed by maintenance at a later date. There's generally not very much case drain, though. Um, I have been told that, you know, you really want to look for a lot of case drain in the ecology bottle because that might indicate that there's uh, some type of failure possibly going to happen with your hydraulic pump. So nothing too much to look at in here uh, and that's about it for that. Lots of pressure uh, indication electronic sensing equipment that's in there. Um, you can this is a, a uh, a nut that's tightened on to here and then this is a um, a telltale uh, if, if it's backed off this is going to break off and tell the maintenance that uh, it's it's no longer tight to the spec that they wanted at and you can see that that that's all over the place here lock wire so that inspection is just about down. We're going to close it back up and lock it, as you can see here. This next, in, next in panel that's right here is the water servicing panel. This is potable water. In order to have an indication of this, uh, if, if to check it, is what you need to do is hook up the battery inside the aft service bay. And then you would uh, look at it from there. So now we're looking at the APU exhaust port. We're going to look at that in real good detail here. Really good pictures coming up. Um, this is a just a, a um, APU exhaust um, deflector plate here. It, you can see there's some little bit of heat damage there. So here is inside the APU exhaust and the the venting that 
pushes the uh, APU exhaust down and not straight out. And this is a, a liner. I'm not ex exactly sure what that liner does, possibly just to quiet the noise down. I'm not exactly sure. There you go. There's the in. So the inside the aft um, equipment bay is the APU enclosure, which we're going to look at here in a second. So the APU enclosure would be in here, and there's kind of a duct that runs from that uh, to the exterior of the aircraft, which is what we're looking at from the outside. Okay, so now we're looking at the CF-34 engine. Uh, lots of components uh, to look at here. All the fasteners have to be locked. There's another little kind of an access door that's on the top here. We want to make sure that that is locked. And there's fasteners that are on the cowling as well. Underneath the engine, um, just all these drain points here. Want to make sure that there's not too much excess fluid, um, engine oil, that kind of thing leaking out of them. Any access ports are all closed. Looking down the jet pipe itself, want to make sure that the that is that there's nothing in there. That uh, any signs of the the turbine blades. Uh, uh, being missing which would be pretty hard to do to determine but uh, just obvious signs of damage looking at the APU looking at this area looking at um, the APU uh, I'm sorry the, one of the pack vents in the top here and the ram air vent on the top those are all clear uh, having a look at the elevator, look at the leading edge of the elevator, make sure that there's no damage to that. This is within the limitation for the uh, stab position. There is a uh, elevator PCU unit, which is in here. We want to make sure that there's no um, hydraulic fluid leaking. Uh, same thing here. So this is one gigantic fuel tank and the fuel tank, the tail tank is actually made up of two saddle tanks as well as one gigantic tank, but it's measured with one single um, quantity for the tail tank. So the saddle tanks are included in the tail tank. Looking straight up at the elevator, the P aileron piece, the the elevator PCUs would be in here. These are the weep holes. Looking at all the static wicks, making sure they're all there. Again, if we're missing them, one of them, we can consult the CDU, a CDL. The uh, location for the PCU weep holes. Fluid coming out of there is bad. Looking back at the tail, everything's all in good shape here. Nothing's bent. The light's in good shape. No damages around this area. Drain masts are all clear. Drain mast is clear. Gain the engine itself. Everything, all the fasteners are all on. Are, are all locked into place and this uh, access door is closed so we can look at inside the bypass duct and what we're looking for in here during this inspection is the blocker doors are not blocking in any way indicating that there's some type of failure to the reverser mechanism and um, there's a whole bunch of little, not really arms, but there's a whole bunch of connection points that are all the way around inside of here. I, I might have a better view of them here. You can see them right there. There's the blocker door um, mechanism for when the cascade reversers um, are actuated. The uh, This is what is going to block the airflow from coming out this way and then exit. Uh, forward instead of rear with the bypass air and not the turbine exhaust air. 
This is all acoustic deadening material here to quiet down the engine. I can't exactly remember what this is for, but I believe this is uh, possibly the uh, uh, cooler, maybe the oil cooler um, for the engine. Really good look of the acoustic material and the blocker inside, which is obviously in the uh, flight position. If this mechanism were to open up by more than one eighth of an inch, we would get a CAS message and it would indicate that there is a reverser unsafe. So one eighth of an inch movement, we would get a reverser unsafe. If that were to occur, then we're gonna start looking at our, our QRH and our memory items, which are, um, there isn't really a memory item for this one, but it's in our QRH. We're going to slow the aircraft down below 200 knots and uh, once we've achieved below 200 knots we're going to press our emergency reverser stow button which well we'll talk about this in the future but they affectionately refer it to as the million dollar button if you press that button you're going to cause a whole bunch of damage to occur but the reverser will shut so we want to make sure we don't press that button. Okay, continue our inspection underneath here. Um, this is the lav service door. We have had this door break off in flight because it was not latched properly and uh, that we want to make sure that any latch is, is, uh, is latched properly and, and test it by giving a little tap and then ensuring that the, the lock is locked. Okay, so we've had a really good look at the engine and um, we've had a look at, um, we haven't looked at this yet though. This little, this little device right here is a, like a poppet valve. So if the inlet, if the uh, CF-34 engine inlet um, bleed air duct for the anti-ice system over pressures in any way, this will pop out and uh, that would indicate during our walk around that there was an overpressure uh, situation and that would maintenance would have to look at. Here's the uh, cowling locks. We've looked at all these different components here. This is the ground power unit for DC voltage and this is typically used for maintenance functions only but this is where DC would be hooked up. This is the um, the water inspection. Give it a pop here. So we would have the battery. I, I believe the batteries are going to be hooked up here so we'll, we'll have a look. Maybe not. So the, the batteries on the um, in the aft service bay would be hooked up. Once that's done, we'd come out here and flip the switch up. And there's kind of a, a motor or some type of electrical function that, that, you'll, that you'll hear. And then there's generally some draining that occurs underneath here as well when you, when you flip that. And then the appropriate amount of water level will show up on here with a, a green light as it moves up and that's typically between three quarters to full depending on how much it's being used again this is a potable water so this could be used for drinking if required generally we don't uh, this is the potable water servicing uh, location get a lock so that looks really, really good. We've had a look at all these different components. As you can see, this walk around, it takes a while. Uh, you, need, you need quite a bit of time to make it happen. So we just kind of point back here 
and then we're going to come back and have a really good look at the app service bay here in just a second. Okay, so we have now looked all the way around the right side of the aircraft. We're now underneath the aircraft and we're just about to open the aft service bay. So we move up to the handle itself and just like the uh, other handles in the aircraft, we're going to push, push this button. It's going to deploy the plunger and explode, expose it and we're going to rotate it clockwise and it reaches a point where it just falls down and so you have to kind of brace it with your hand and, uh, and then the ladder mechanism will uh, be exposed so we just continue to turn this this entire panel then pops down which is what you're looking at here and this allows us to go up inside this very large area uh, called the aft service bay. So what we're going to do is we're going to climb up here. We're going to hook up the battery and we're going to turn the light on. And we're probably going to bring a flashlight with us as well. This is what it looks like from, from the side of the aircraft. Okay, so we're now in the aft service bay and there's a whole lot of stuff going on back here and there's a lot of things to check as flight crew. Um, one thing I didn't really mention is generally an extensive amount of maintenance has occurred on the aircraft and as flight crew we're not really checking like the oil and we're not checking tire pressures or anything like that. We're just ensuring that everything is um, the way it needs to be for flight. Um, we are checking accumulator pressures, but beyond that, we're, we're, we'll, we'll look at the other um, specific areas that we'll look at. So we'll hook up the battery. This is a much bigger battery than the one in the nose. We hook it up exactly the same way, just a little bit of a longer cable. Ensure it's locked, give it a tug. Uh, these are all the drained for the um, uh, any uh, battery uh, uh, what do you call it uh, um, battery acid gases that kind of thing there's a temperature indicator here the battery has to maintain a specific temperature otherwise we're going to get a cast warning quite a few things you can see here so we went from here being like basically walk straight up to here we're looking at the battery so we're looking back at the aft pressure bulkhead so this is the aft pressure bulkhead back here um, there's a big uh, kind of a tray that sits here and then there's a great big container and this is the APU uh, where the APU is located so here's the battery again battery connection point temperature probe Right above, right below the APU um, equipment bay um, are the APU. Um, well, losing my words here, uh, is the fire bottles. So there's fire bottle one, fire bottle two, and there's another fire bottle that's on the top. Each one of these are squibs. So there's a cartridge that's inside of here, which is electronically fired and um, releases the halon gas which is inside here so as flight crew we want to make sure that each one of these are at 600 psi approximately um, during our walk around when we plugged in the battery there's a number of tests that are occurring with this jb5 junction box and the oil um, 
the oil uh, detection system. So we have oil filter bypass checks that are going on and um, chip detectors. So if we get any um, metal filings and that kind of thing in our engine, uh, the chip detector would determine that and we would have a light that would come on. We generally don't do too much of that as flight crew. At the back, this is the app pressure bulkhead and these are part of the pressurization system. These are relief valves. Really good look at the JB5. Want to make sure with your flashlight that all of the um, all of the circuit breakers are in. You can see there's some pretty important stuff there. There's the engine ignition. Uh, the APR is there. I can see the a APU, PCU, uh, power control unit. There's there's a whole bunch of stuff that's going on with this very important junction box. So there's a lot of wiring going to it. Good look at, again, the oil filter and uh, chip detector system. And uh, we're looking straight up here. Oh, sorry, straight back. This is kind of a panel that you can walk on and uh, hooking up the battery here. Doing a test. So we got a left oil filter indication. There we go. So I did talk to maintenance about that and um, and they were going to check it out. So what we're continuing to look at here, so here's the APU enclosure. The APU is completely sealed inside of this box. And here is the, if you can remember from the outside, we were looking at the APU exhaust. This is that pipe that we were looking at and all the, the sound deadening and insulation that's around it. Um, in this area and also in this area, there's going to be fire detection loops to make sure that any, the actual loop is inside of this box. If there's some type of uh, APU fire, uh, would be indicated by that, that by the loop. And then we would um, follow a procedure um, of uh, pressing our APU fire button and dependent on the what we're where we are in flight um we're either going to wait for five seconds or ten seconds and then we're going to press the squib and that will release the halon into the compartment and hopefully put the fire out lots of different components here a lot of this has to do with pressurization really good look at the pack unit here very, very complex. Um, Hot Start did an absolutely incredible job of, of um, modeling this uh, complex piece of equipment here. Lots of piping. Making sure everything, you know, is looking the way it should. You can see just back there is the second or the third fire bottle so this is the we were looking at pack number one here's pack number two there's a whole bunch of mixing valves here uh, to control cabin temperature the other pack and there's a whole bunch of lines that you can see and we're just starting to see the hydraulic system number one Here's hydraulic system number one. Here's the top of it. Here is the uh, hydraulic reservoir instructions and um, how to, to refill it. It's not something that we do. The only thing that we really do is make sure that it's not leaking. There's no hydraulic fluid anywhere. Um, and we also make sure that all of the the various filters that are on it uh, all of the different filter indicators. There's one right here. There's one right here. None of these are popped out. If they're popped out, it means that the filter is likely in bypass. 
and um, that's not a good thing. It means that the, the filter is no longer doing its job. This is one of those ecology bottles, like I said, for that hydraulic system number two, or um, hydraulic system number three. Um, this is what would uh, collect the case drain oil. These are actually control cables that you can see here. So these are flight control cables, which we'll look at a bit more, it's more control cables. They're gonna go all the way to the back. This is the oil, the automatic oil filling system. We'll call it the semi-automatic oil filling system, which is modeled in the Hot Start 650. So there's a control panel for that, which is right here, which we um, we we check after after we've um, run the aircraft. We shut down, and within 15 minutes, we would check the oil. And there's a procedure that you would use to to do that. Typically, you open the cover, uh, turn the switch on, uh, reset the system, let go. And then it'll tell you which side needs needs oil. It'll be like left or right. And then once that's determined, we're going to turn this wheel left or right. So one says left, one says right. And um, turn it to the direction that you want the oil to go to. Note where the oil level is. And, and uh, it'll run. You hear the motor running right here. And uh, while that's occurring, it'll shut off. You make this go back to the center and uh, do the other side if required. Once done, make sure this is centered, turn the switch off inside, close the lid and lock it and record the amount of oil. So there's a couple things we can look at here. These are all flight control cables that are going through different bulkheads here. You can see that each flight control cable, as it goes through the bulkhead, there's kind of a a grommet to ensure that any of the the aluminum is not going to cause any binding, um, and uh, this is you know obviously very very important. What you're looking at here is the tail tank components. So this is the saddle tank on the right hand side, on the left hand side, and further back is the the main component of the tail tank. As I as I mentioned to you externally on the outside of the aircraft. Um, I'll just look outside here real quick. This is all one gigantic fuel tank that you're looking at. So inside we can see the saddle tanks on either side and then we have kind of a void and then at a, on an angle going up in this direction is the tail tank. Or the aft portion of the tail tank. So continuing to look here, you can see control cables here and pulleys that are going to go all the way up to the top elevator. Different sensors all over the place in here. So here's pulleys. Uh, different mechanisms for the flight controls are, are there. We want to make sure that, I'll just back up a little bit. This is actually a tensioning um, for uh, sorry, a tensioning uh, device for the cable so they can determine uh, when they're doing their rigging of, of the flight controls. This is one of the areas that, that they would um, adjust that with, which I, I don't know a lot about. So looking at both saddle tanks here, So um, each wing uh, holds 80, 560 pounds of fuel. The ox tank is 7,168 pounds. And um, my brain is shutting down here for tonight, folks. And then the, um, the aft is 3,112, I'm pretty sure. couple things we can see in here is the flight data recorder and um, also the um, let's come back here the, the flight data recorder and the cockpit voice recorder so here is the hydraulic system uh, bootstrap hydraulic system 
filters, hydraulic pump, filter bypass indicator, filter bypass indicator, ecology bottle. So we're now looking aft and down at the um, the uh, aft service bay door on the right hand side you can see an accumulator we're looking for 1500 psi here and 1500 psi on the other side so hydraulic system number one 1500 psi accumulator pressure here's the light number one real good look 1500 psi a big jungle of uh, different um, uh, mixing. Uh, actually, this is where our ram air is at the, at the top of the fuselage comes down from. Hydraulic system number two. Again, we're looking for everything we did on number one. There's a little bit of ecology oil there. You can see a little bit of case drain. More flight control cables. Obviously, making sure you know nothing is uh, on top of the cables and everything is free and and you know looks good to good to fly. Uh, Fifteen hundred psi. Now we're looking in the back. I, I double check again. Make sure everything is all looking good. I double check the battery and then I'm I'm ready to exit this area. Here's the APU enclosure, another really good look at it. The APU uh, intake air coming from the top of the fuselage. All the mixing valves again. Satellite daddy unit. Here we go 600 psi approximately. Lots and lots and lots of stuff, as I mentioned. More cables. So this is looking forward now. Uh, aft pressure bulkhead. The control cables moving through onto their pulleys throughout the aircraft. Really good look of uh, saddle tanks being here and here. Um, the the main tail tank in the back all of the pulleys are here good look at the pack hydraulic system number two again Oil replenishment system, we talked about that already. Another good look at the bypass, uh, oil filter bypass pin. And the pack. Okay, so we've had a super good look at the um, underneath here. We've now closed this up, closed it. How we did that is we, we, we came down, we turned the light off, made sure the battery is still connected. We pushed, we kind of sit down here, push the door up. And while we're doing that, we rotate this counterclockwise and push the plunger back up and now that door is now closed. I believe this is the satellite um, antenna uh, for the satellite system that you saw inside there and the drain mast. So looking up here, we're going to do exactly the same thing that we did on the other side. Looking at the seal here, looking at the aileron PCU, 
there is something that's missing here. I, I'm sure it's going to be added soon to the Challenger 650 for the hot start, but there is a um, a tail tank relief valve that is here, and I will just bring a picture up of that real quick here. I think I got a picture of it. Do one more quick break here, guys. Thank you. Okay, so we're nearing the end here just to let you know we're we're just about done um, We're going to look at a few more slides. So we're going to continue to complete our inspection of the the tail So looking up at the tail here now we can see that we have this component right here so as you know that there's two saddle tanks here and then the uh, the tail tank back here comprise you know 3,000 pounds approximately a fuel back there this is the reef relief vent for that and you can probably see probably see it better in another picture there's a very slight um, staining of fuel that's along here so it is normal for a little bit of fuel to escape but we don't want to see the valve popped. That's really what we're looking for. There we go. Okay, so left CF34, having a good look at that. Same thing we did on the other side, looking for all the different components. Nothing broken off. Everything all latched. Making sure that the, the ram air has nothing blocking the pack relief valve or the, the, the pack vent is is uh, clear I mentioned to you on the other side this is the overpressuring um, vent for the uh, our indicator overpressuring indicator for the in engine inlet uh, anti-ice system there it is good look at it Looking up at the CF-34 engine inlet, do this on both sides. Um, I, I basically what I'm doing here is I've backed my uh, body up onto the wing and I'm looking back up to make sure that there's no damage onto the inlet ring itself. You can see the acoustic material in there. This is the bottom of the engine, making sure that uh, all the panels are all closed. Um, if we have any issues with the APU, specifically we, if we're outside and there's some type of APU fire, we can actually come back here. This is generally in the left in the uh, unlocked position because of this. We could press this button and shut the APU down. 
So we saw a whole bunch of black smoke coming out of the APU exhaust. We could run over here and, and press the APU stop. This is also where we can determine what problems has um, an APU fault. If there's an APU fault that's occurring, we can come back here and uh, press the test button and see what's occurring. So is there some, some type of uh, generator adapter problem? Is there some kind of oil problem? Was there an overspeed? So that's what that's for. Um, this is also the connection point for an air start cart. So if we have to do, if we have a broken APU and uh, we need to do an air start of the engines because the CF-34 engines require pneumatic starting. There's no uh, starter generator to uh, turn the, the turbine over um, to start the engine. So we have to do it pneumatically. So this is the, uh, the port for that. Good look at the AP fault board. This is monitor. Um, this is uh, um, shown very really well also in the hot start um, model. This is the uh, the baggage door opens up just like all the other doors. It slides up and locks into place, and we have a little cover that we bring down to make sure that there's no damage to the area. It's quite a large large area in the back uh, a couple other things I was going to mention so we there's um, 12 static dischargers um, if we are missing them any one of them, we would consult the CDL. Uh, the tank relief, uh, sorry, the tail tank relief valve, which we just looked at, we just want to make sure it's flush. That's all we need to do. Um, we didn't, I didn't really mention to you exactly wh where it was, but uh, we'll just go to this here. So this mast that's right here is a dump mast. So this is a fuel dump mast and it has a turbulator on it. We want to make sure that the the turbulator vane condition is uh, in good condition. We want to make sure the tail vent is clear and there's no leaks and the APU drains are all clear. So all of these are all underneath here as well. So you know no bugs or debris or whatever it may be is blocking any of those. Um, what else we mention here? So on the engines themselves, we're kind of looking at that right now. So engine anti-ice blowout plug uh, is flush with the engine panel. Um, the engine cowls are in good condition. Thrust reversers are um, completely locked. And uh, as I showed you inside the engine uh, with, with the flashlight that the blocker doors are are all in good condition. The fuel drains underneath the engines. There's nothing, um, you know, too much draining out of there. And um, we talked about the DC power door on the other side. It's all, all locked. This is um, hydraulic system number three, which is one of the which is the largest hydraulic system on the aircraft. Um, it basically is this big component that's underneath um, the, uh, uh, where is it here? So we're in the left side, fuse, aft fuselage behind the, the flap here. We're looking at the accumulator. So we're looking at, at the hydraulic pump again, exactly like I said on the other side, uh, no drips. Um, no puddles under here, no red fluid. This is the action, this is the accumulator itself. And come to a photo of it. There's, you can see 
1500 PSI is what we're looking for. So there's, there is an ecology bottle in here as well, which is kind of hard to see. There it is. So we're going to flash our light on that, make sure that there it's not too much in there. Case strain oil, accumulator, no leaks, 1500 PSI. Now we're looking underneath the uh, left hand side, making sure that there's no um, damage to the bottom of the aircraft. The gear bay is all looking good. We would do the exact same inspection that we did on the right hand side, starting from the front, starting looking at the back, looking up in here into the bins, making sure that the, the loops, the fire loops are all in good condition. We do exactly the same thing on the left hand side. It just, we kind of do it in reverse. Exactly the same thing we did on the other side. Look at the spoiler panels, flaps, canoes, static wicks, ailerons, um, left nav lights, left um, strobe light, good condition for the lens, fuel cap. Look at back at the engine. We do, we would do this on both sides. We want to make sure that the fan disc itself is there's no damage to it. The probes that are in here, we want to make sure that they're not blocked um, and they're in good condition. There we go. There's a good look at it. Probes. You can see really clearly here that we've got the. Uh, bypass air is so here's the fan and here's the internal uh, the core of the engine all acoustic material here another look good look again we did we would have done a much more detailed inspection as we did over on this side for the main landing gear leading edge landing lights lens inspection light inspection and then we're going to come up to, we're going to complete everything we're doing down here. And we're going to come up to the top of the plane and make sure that this is all clear up top here. Uh, there's no ice or debris or anything like that on the top here. And all these ports on the top here are free and the engine inlets are in good condition. So I do apologize. I see that uh, I left you guys outside here and um, I was showing you a bunch of slides that you didn't actually see. So just to complete the video, I will come back to it um, right now and go through it fairly quickly. I've kind of already done the audio portion of it, but here's the tail again. I look to make sure that the um, tank tail tank relief valve is flush right there. The engine is um, all the things I mentioned to you about the engine while you were standing outside looking at the aircraft. Um, all these uh, different ports are all clear. The engine anti-ice blowout plug is still in, is uh, is flush. We look at it there. Engine inlet is uh, free of any dents. Underneath the engine, no leaks. We talked about this as you were looking at the uh, exterior of the aircraft. Uh, here is the APU fault panel. This is the um, air start connection. This is the APU hours here. This is also a model, I believe, on the hot start. So this uh, has 872 hours in the, on the APU. 
Uh, this is the baggage door. This is hydraulic system number three. Hydraulic system number three. The accumulator. The pressure gauge. Again, looking for no fluid leaks. Uh, no hydraulic uh, oil pooling on the bottom here would be red. All the hoses are in good condition. 1500 PSI is what we're looking for. And the ecology bottle again. Underneath the aircraft making sure that the gear bay is, uh, is all good to go underneath there. Same inspection we did over here is the same one you're going to do on this side. Exactly like I mentioned. Main landing gear, same inspection as you did on the right. Fuselage inspection, window inspection, spoiler panels, flap inspection. Look back at the gear, looking good. Static covers are all on. Ailerons in good condition. No gaps. Everything is looking really good. Fuel cap is on. Check it. Give it a good tap. Make sure it's locked. Leading edge is in really good condition. Remember, if any of the sealant is missing, we have to look at our AFM and other manuals to determine how much of a performance um, hit we're going to take. Basically, it's going to cause more fuel burn because it's less uh, streamlined. Looking back at the engine, everything's in good condition. Engine looks good. Fan blade looks good. Temperature probes look good. The, the vents are, are not blocked. This is all looking good here. Landing light. Everything is looking really good. Windows are in good shape. Again, like as I mentioned before, always stand back. Look at the aircraft. Does it look right? Standing on top now, looking back. Fuselage, looking for any any signs of um, of ice on the top. If we're outside, uh, any deformities, uh, that kind of thing. Maybe a bird hit it. Who knows? Look at same thing all the way around. Uh, ram air in the back. Um, all these different ports are are all free and clear. Ram air. Looking good. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is our walk around complete. It took a while, but um, as it does in real life, it does take a while. Uh, you get into a groove. Obviously, you're not stopping and talking about all the different components um, to whoever uh, um, you know. You're going to be doing that yourself, and you want to do that quite expeditiously. But I'm 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 more into doing it right than I am, you know, getting it done quickly. So I give myself lots and lots of time to get that done. If I'm the person that's doing the walk around, um, do it right. And you only have to do it once. So we're going to walk back up. Look back just like we did. Everything looks good. Really, really good. And uh, we'll just walk back here a little bit. Turn around. Have a look at the nice 727 there. I 
Have a look at our beautiful aircraft. And uh, and that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the Challenger 650 from Hot Starts for the X-Plane. A walk around. Yes, it was super detailed, um, as it is in real life. Um, if you wanted real life, ladies and gentlemen, this is exactly what we do. And yes, it does take time, but um, you know, you at the end of the day, you're flying a safe aircraft, and it's really up to to you to make sure it's safe and by doing all the different things. Thanks very much for coming along today. I really appreciate it. This is my very first.